get 225 buses in Greece Central. It's not five buses, it's a significant fleet. So that is the concern, and is there the energy to do that? By 2027, school districts won't be able to buy any new diesel buses, and by 2035, they'll only be allowed to use electric buses. But is there enough power on our grid to sustain that state mandate? That's a question News 10 NBC investigative reporter Jennifer Lukey recently posed to the CEO of RG&E. Jen didn't quite get a straight answer, and as she shows us tonight, that's the same problem some of our local districts are having. Some of our towns are already begging rg and &E for more space on the power grid. I recently took those concerns to the CEO of rg and &E. Do you have any concerns? So many towns seem to be having these issues when we're just talking about housing and business development, let alone some of the upcoming state mandates for electric school buses and public transit. Can you keep up with those mandates and how? That's where I reference the nationwide challenge. It's really something that all utilities and all leaders across the United States are really looking at. Yeah, but I mean, this school bus mandate is coming for us in the next couple of years. So is it, is it even physically possible for our districts right now? I think that's really something that the state has been looking at in a collaborative approach between um, NYSERDA, um, the New York Independent System Operator, uh, the New York Public Service Commission, um, state government. So it sounds like you're saying, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm asking you kind of a direct question. Uh, do you think that it will be delayed then? It's not a decision that's really mine. Um, I think each of the schools has to figure out their approach for what they can do for electrification. Many of our schools are trying to do just that. Basically, the feasibility study is done, except we've been waiting for almost three months for our g &E to provide us information about the transformers, if there's enough electricity to do it, what it's all going to cost to do these infrastructure upgrades. Has rg and &E said what the holdup is? No. <laughs> no. You're just waiting. You have just no waiting. timetable on no, when it might no, be done? Nothing. At the moment, the Greece School District has a fleet of more than 200 buses, and not one of them is electric. But if the state mandate stands, that's the only thing they'll be able to buy come 2027. Here's what they know at the moment. We need about 5.6 megawatts of power to charge and sustain 190 electric buses. Out at Ladder Road, there's 1.5 surplus megawatts of power. So that won't cut it. So the two main questions we're looking for is how much is that going to cost and how is the work going to get done? And who's going to pay for it? If we have to buy, I mean, the buses are $250,000 more. If we have to do infrastructure work on a new transformer, it could be millions and millions of dollars. If we can't set that money aside and have it as part of a capital project or do a bus reserve account where there's zero impact to taxpayers, if I have to take it out to a vote, I'm not confident that t taxpayers in Greece would support that in a vote. So that's, that's why we're trying to plan to do this the right way. And Greece isn't the only school district trying to figure this all out. One of the challenges that they have is so many districts are doing these studies and asking for feedback about their power supply and how much access do they have and how much will they need and where's it going to come from. So take what we're doing and now add in Hilton and, and Spencerport and Churchville and East Arondequoit and, and the city of Rochester and it just compounds into an issue with our genie saying how and where are we getting this power. Line for the process of how determining how much power any district is going to need because they're all different sizes and have different needs. So they don't have a set amount of time that districts can plan on. But she did say that they sent a team over to Greece this week to try and finish up its fleet assessment. Brett and Dana. Jen, on top of just making sure there's enough power to do it, there's all the other expenses like for the buses themselves and charging stations. Have districts priced those out? They have. Right now, it's actually about $250,000 more per bus 
for an electric model compared to a diesel one. Now look, the point behind this whole mandate is to decrease emissions, make the air cleaner and healthier. And the hope is that ultimately the electric buses will be cheaper to maintain, but right now the technology is still new and very expensive. And it looks like it's the regular old people like you and me who are going to pay for this transition on both ends, right? If RG&E needs to add all this infrastructure, our rates are gonna go up as customers. And if the state needs to kick in and help pay for it all, our taxes are gonna be used. So Brett, we're gonna be paying for this on both ends as rate payers and taxpayers. And in the end, we don't know exactly how much it's going to cost and whether that money is gonna be funneled to them through us on school taxes or on rate increases. So obviously this is a story we will be following for some time to come. Either way, we're paying. Yeah. All right, Jen, thank you.